Okay, so it's June 2014, and I am in Coronado today with Trent Bayless, a 17-year-old who is living here in Panama. Um, I want to ask you a few questions about your life here and your move here, Trent. Okay. Um, first of all, can you tell me where you came from, where you moved here from? I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, pretty much. Um, lived there my whole life. 14 years living in Texas. So how old were you when you moved here then? Um, I was 14. 14. Okay. Um, and did you know any Spanish when you moved to Panama? No, other than just the bad <laughs> words because I'm from Texas and there's a lot of Mexican friends I have, but uh, okay. no, no, I didn't know anything before I came here. <laughs> okay. So, um, were you? Did you want to move here with your parents? And, you know, well, sometimes kids are just forced to go along. They have no choice. I, I um, didn't really have much of a choice, mm -hmm. but I mean, at first I was kind of shocked. Like we built our whole life like we were never going to leave Texas, but mm -hmm. then all of a sudden my parents told me, "Okay, uh, okay, it's time to leave." You know, at first I was shocked, but I mean, I ended up. I ended up accepting it and being like, okay, this is a cool experience, you know, not many kids get to move to a third world country and go live their life, so I ended up becoming accepting of it. And, so your um, impression was that Panama was a third world country? Of course, I didn't know much about it other uh -huh. than, okay, Panama Canal, it's Central America, it'll be hot, you know. I didn't know much really coming into it, but... Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I know I, I moved around a lot when I was a child because I, my dad was in the military and I always felt moving to a new school and being the new kid was very difficult. Um, how was that not only going to a new school, but a new school in a different country? Yeah, it was a totally new thing, but um, I don't know, my, my whole mindset on it was very different than what, say, a normal 14-year-old kid moving to a whole new country and going to a whole new school could have been, but I mean the school was very open, the people were very nice, um, and I'm just an open person in general anyway, so it was it was a pretty quick change for me, and I adapted to it really easily. So you were starting high school here? Yeah, I, I moved literally like a week before my ninth grade year was going to start. Okay. So I got here and I was here for two days and then school started. So, so did everybody in school speak Spanish and you were just completely lost or how did mm -hmm. that? Well, I go to an international school, Panama Coast International School in Gorgona. Okay. And the whole school is pretty much taught in English, oh. except they also teach Spanish and a lot of the kids already speak Spanish. So when I got there, yeah, a lot of the kids spoke Spanish, but they also, most of them spoke English too. So it wasn't like I was just totally out of it, you know. I mean, I was able to get in pretty easily. So most of the other kids that go to the school are expat? Um, actually, no, it's very diverse. Like, my high school, when I first got here, it was eight kids in the whole high school. Wow. Now it's a lot to us, but it's about 23. <laughs> and, which sounds funny because that's not even a whole class from the school I was <laughs> yeah, going right. to go to. But, I mean, the question. Okay. Um, so you have, have locals and expats in the school. Yes. It's, yes. A, it's a mixture. Right. Yes. Um, like, for instance, I have a kid, there's a kid from Spain, a, kid from, oh. a few kids from Canada, um, another girl from Texas. There's girls from Panama. They're, they're really all over. Like, okay. it's not one, one way or another. So speaking about girls, um, I know my son was only interested in girls in cars pretty much and sports through high school. You're a high school, typical high school boy, I'm going to assume. So what is it like um, meeting girls, dating? Uh, do you go out? Um, social life here is... It's kind of different because our high school, because it's so small, it's like, I mean, I've only had, oddly enough, I only have had one girlfriend since I've been here in my own almost three years. But, I mean, our whole school is kind of like a family thing. I mean, sometimes people date, whatever, but for social life and that, it's, I, I don't know, I, I haven't had a whole lot of 
novias, girlfriends, or whatever. But there's the the diversity of people around here is vast, so you know you can really meet anyone. So you mean people come and go, kind of? Quickly yeah, here? Pe people come and go, but um, for my school, it's I, I wouldn't really think about dating anyone in the school, anyways. It's just so small and. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> Do you get but, out and yeah, yeah. You go to town or things like that? Yeah, you it's go to like... Go movies? I mean... If, if, if I want to hang out with my friends or something, it's like sometimes they'll come over here, we'll just hang out at my house or go to the beach or something. Or sometimes on a weekend it's like, hey, you want to go to the city? We'll just all meet up and take the bus together, go to the city, go to the mall there. Because there's there's not much of that life out here. There's there are no malls. There are no necessarily specific places where teenagers can go mm -hmm. hang out or whatever. So there's not a lot going on here in Coronado. It's kind of more relaxed, you know. But if you want to go to the city, go hang out with friends there, then it's only an hour away too. So that, so you that, just hop on a bus. Yeah, we just hop on a bus and go. It's okay. Pretty simple. Um, do you have a driver's permit? Are you driving yet? Or can, it's, can that happen here? It's, it's kind of weird because I've been driving for about seven months now, except I only have my learner's permit from the United States. But um, to get a Panamanian license here, you have to be 18. Mm -hmm. So, But you can drive here with your United States or Canadian or whatever international license. But I mean, if a cop pulled me over and I gave them my permit, they wouldn't really even know the difference between that and a real license. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not endorsing any bad behavior here, right, okay. but it's just kind of the way it works here. It's like you can see 12-year-old kids driving a Polaris, you know, at 40 kilometers an hour just right down the road, whatever. So it's, it's a little different. Okay. So you are a junior in high school right now. Next year you're a senior. Uh, what are your plans after you graduate? Um... <laughs> Luna. Um, for now, I'm not entirely sure of what I want to do, of course, you know, I'm still young, but I, uh, for now I plan on going to um, a Florida State University campus in the city. In so, Panama City. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize, but Florida State, they have a separate little mini campus here in the city um, that you could do your whole four years there, but oh. they offer a program where you can do your first two years there and then they offer you to have the ability to transfer to Tallahassee at the main campus but get in-state tuition. So so if I do my first two years oh. here then I can transfer to the main campus in Florida mm -hmm. and, and then from there I could go to Madrid because they have a campus there, they have one in England, they have one in Italy so then I can just hop around and... Sounds like you're becoming a man of the world in yes, the future. quite. <laughs> so you um, you don't necessarily feel like you want to live in Panama the rest of your life? You want to go out? I, I don't know. I, I know I want to go out. I want to go see and travel and whatever, but I, I really don't know where I'll end up. You know? I think that's great. I, I My personal experience is that kids like yourself who get an opportunity to go abroad... It usually broadens your oh, it totally desire your to want to see the rest of the world, yeah. and you get a different perspective. So that's great. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice? I mean, if there there are kids that might see this video, okay. and their parents are moving out here, and they're thinking, "Oh my God, I don't want to move to Panama," or maybe they're concerned or worried or something. What advice would you give them, or any other thoughts? Okay, some of the biggest advice I would have to give. Would just you have to have an open mind about everything. Like you can't go into Panama having any expectations necessarily. Like one big thing is a lot of North Americans they come down here and they want it to be the North American way for everything. But things are a little different here, you know. Things sometimes things happen a little slower or however it may be, but just going into it with an open mind and just accepting the country for the way it is and not trying to change it is very important and also getting out and doing things like my first year here you know I there was a time span where it was it was kind of hard for me I was just so bored I didn't have anything to do but it was just because I wasn't going and doing anything mm -hmm. you know I was just like at home on my computer like 
and playing video games all day, it's like, what's there to do? But once you get out and you see what you can do and the possibilities, like I'm 17 and I could, I can pretty much live the life of an adult, like a, th a normal 30 year old adult living down here. Like I can go work right now at a high level position, you know, I can pretty much do whatever I want to do, but it's just, you have to have the desire mm -hmm. to want to do that. So. Well, you have a very mature perspective for your age. I think you're going to go yeah. far. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so thank you, Trent. And uh, I'm going to close this video with a quick uh, little shot over here of the view that Trent wakes up to every morning here in Coronado. Yeah, I don't really mind it too much. <laughs> <laughs> he is also an avid surfer and goes out surfing. So here you can see some of the waves and the beach with very few people on them, which is amazing. And thank you, Trent.